Let's start from Harmony Gold this morning. Show a turnaround for the September quarter with a headline profit of 141 million rand. That was after a loss of 27 million in June. Joining me in the studio is CEO Graham Briggs. Uh, Graham, thanks very much for coming. It's always great Thank to have you. you. Um, you had a, a slightly lower gold price in rand terms during that quarter. So although yeah. we saw record dollar prices, you say in the commentary the rand gold price was down 2.8 percent. You also had higher costs, so really just down to improved gold sales during the quarter, wasn't it? Yeah, gold sales certainly made a difference. Um, yeah, so really the quarter was as we planned it, uh, and and so on operational things there were a few issues which didn't quite happen to plan. But uh, in general, the plan and the strategy is still very much intact. It's always difficult to go according to plan when you don't know what the gold price is going to do and what the rand is going to do over the quarter. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the gold price is good. It's a good gold price. And uh, the rand strength, of course, just takes that sort of edge off it. You know, one looks at offshore producers and says, wow, could I have been exposed to that? But, uh, you know, we get dealt that card and, and there's not much we can do with it. And of course, you are moving more towards becoming uh, an offshore producer, at least some of your, your production coming from offshore. Yeah. Tell us how that, that's progressing, because I think you put out a report on the Wafi Golpu project recently, and it looks like it is going to be a lot bigger than previously expected. Yeah, I mean, Hidden Valley is now commissioned and it's building up production, so it's, uh, it'll get into some great, uh, great production numbers in the future. Uh, Wafi Golpu is just simply fantastic. About uh, 39 million ounces equivalent gold there, so copper and gold deposits. Uh, and it growing bigger and bigger, you know, with as as we drill more holes, it gets bigger and bigger. It's in pre-feasibility now, so it certainly looks like it's going to be a great mine. Uh, and you say in the commentary today, potential for 400,000 to 700,000 ounces of gold a year from that mine. Yep. When are we looking at, though? When, when would that kick in? Uh, we have to go through pre-feasibility, then feasibility, and then build it. Uh, so 2016 is the targeted first production. So for the time being, you really remain a, a South African producer Absolutely. at this at this stage. Three Absolutely. billion in capital, three billion dollars in capital expenditure needed for Wafi Golpu. Yeah. Where does that come from? Well, remember we've got partners in there, so it's fifty percent of that. So one one and a half billion for us. Um, and uh, by then, of course, our capital profile in South Africa has very much decreased. We've been spending a lot of capital in, in South Africa on the projects. And those projects will be producing cash. Uh, that's one area of uh, sort of funding. But remember also on a good project, there's always lots of people that are prepared to fund it. Well, I mean, you mentioned Hidden Valley, uh, which was officially opened on the 30th of September. Also a 50-50 JV with, yep. uh, with Newcrest. H how does that compare to Wafi Golpu? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, Hidden Valley is, is sort of a, a sort of 280,000 ounce producer. It's got potential of more. Um, at the moment, it's got 14 year life. Wafi Golpu is simply closer to the 800,000 ounce producer potential. So a lot more exciting. A lot bigger and of course a lot of copper and a lot longer life. You know, at the moment we're looking at a 20 year life, but it's potentially longer. What sort of uh, challenges do you face moving into Papua New Guinea? Because, of course, you face challenges in the South African market, labor, electricity costs, uh, the rand, of course. What sort of challenges are there over there? Are some of them the same? Yeah, there's no ideal country. I mean, every country has its challenges. Uh, you have, uh, an, in Papua New Guinea, you've got a challenge of infrastructure. You know, you're in the jungles of, the, of, the, of Papua New Guinea, so there's that challenge. But we've been there since 2003, and uh, we sort of know our way around pretty well, navigate through whether it be uh, politics or, or whatever the case may be. You know, we've, we've been on the ground for a long time. Uh, so there are challenges, but there are challenges in every country. Of course, costs there should be significantly lower than the costs that you face in South Africa at this stage. Absolutely. I, I mean, uh, a Wafi Golpu has got potential of having negative cash costs if you just look at the gold production and use a copper as credit to, to the cost. So, you know, it's that sort of mine. It's, it's just fantastic. Because your costs were up for the September quarter, but you've also come through the, the winter electricity tariff season. We had uh, Neil Pretorius from DRD Gold in here a couple of weeks ago really moaning about these winter mm. electricity tariffs. Do you share his views? Do you think that they're, they're not entirely justified? Yeah, I have, I have a lot of, uh, you know, we have a lot of sympathy for that sort of way of thinking. Um, but, you know, it's, it's at the electricity costs that we have on underground operations is, is substantial. Um, two and a half years ago, we were about 9% of our costs was on electricity. This quarter, 18%. At the moment, we're predicting for the year, 16%. So it's gone up quite dramatically. Uh, we're a big electricity consumer, uh, and so it does affect us. Ventilation, cooling, and hoisting, and so on. So it does affect us greatly. And looking forward, we're expecting big increases next year and the year after. What's mm -hmm. that going to do to the cost base? Have you, have you worked forward on that? 
Well, it's very difficult because we haven't got certainty in all the increases. I mean, what we've been given is another, you know, another set of increases, but there is, of course, in the market talk of even higher increases. So it'll be very difficult if those higher increases, I mean, they will threaten certainly operations uh, and not just harmonies. How about your wage bill at this stage? Because I know lots of miners have come under pressure for, from higher wages, yeah. and we, we've seen some of those wage settlements over the course of this year. Are you also getting pressure at the, pressure at the wage level? Well, we're not, uh, we're not in negotiation at the moment. Our negotiations start probably towards April, maybe the end of April. Um, that's typically when uh, our company starts negotiating wages. And uh, traditionally, we've had two-year agreements, so we just come out of the second of a two-year agreement. That one was implemented 1st of July, and that was 7.5%. You've closed some of your shafts um, in South Africa, those that aren't profitable. Uh, is, is this the extent of it, or do you think as shafts become more and more depleted, we are going to see more, more of your shafts closing down going forward? Well, the gold mining business is a tough m business, and you have to continue to evaluate what you're doing, look at the strategy, look at better ways of doing things. The shafts we closed really were, uh, you know, the ore bodies are depleted, so those were destined to be closed. I mean, we've given long-term notice that they are going to close. But as a gold mining business, you have to continue to look at the way you do things, are there better ways of doing things as a place of cutting costs or whatever the case may be. But it's obviously fluctuating in sort of gold markets, rand gold price and so on. So, you know, there are a lot of moving parts to it. Of course, you also had to close um, some temporarily done due to safety issues and yep. uh, a few deaths uh, reported during the quarter. Of course, that's despite a big safety focus of yours o on the mines at this yeah. stage. Yeah, a huge safety drive. Unfortunately, uh, one event was uh, five fatalities and it it's, was a very unusual event. Uh, but the guys have done well in certain areas on safety and it's a real long-term effort, you know, getting behavior of people. We have about 40,000 people working for the company. That's employees plus contractors. And, uh, you know, we need all need to have the same sort of ideals in, in safety. And, and we're moving that direction. So there are a lot of improvements in other areas. Prospects for the current quarter, also for the gold price moving forward, because we have seen it heading towards that $1,400 an ounce mark. Of course, I've heard you on record saying it could reach $1,500. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's going to go up. I think, uh, you know, if we look at sort of history of gold production, gold production has been going down worldwide, not only in South Africa. There haven't been many fines. Uh, exploration is taking a bit more of a profile right now, so it's happening. But it takes quite a while to get those uh, into production. And of course, there's the whole financial issue. And uh, ultimately, gold is a store of wealth, and it's a, you know it's an investment. I hope you've got gold in your portfolio. But uh, yeah. it's fifteen hundred dollars by when? <laughs> uh, during next year, we're going to get to fifteen hundred. Anytime next year. Yeah, earlier part of next year. Great.